This man puts on a cursed clown costume and it won't come off. His final form will leave you shook. Remember when you were young and loved clowns? No, me neither. But Jack over here just can't get enough. Unfortunately, the clown they booked for his birthday had a midlife crisis and decided clowning around wasn't for him anymore. Not to worry, Jack's crafty father, Kent, is up for the task. He's a realtor by trade and figures he can rummage around the house he's in for some goofy attire. Okay, we've got something here. Hey, everybody! Eh, I'm not convinced you're a clown. Try again. Hey, everybody! Story recapped here. Perfect. It's just a joke. Actually, there's something even cooler waiting in a mysterious chest behind him. Bad, bad, bad idea. I wonder what it is. Back at the birthday party, Kent surprises everyone with his new clown drip. Five hours later. The party has ended, and Kent carries his son back to bed. I know it's you. Hey, he's trying his best. Kent gives himself a little spook after spotting his reflection. Relatable. Then, he shrugs a seductive pose for his wife, Meg. He meets her on the couch, and they almost clown around. But she's not into the costume. She leaves the shower, and Kent passes out. He wakes up the next morning, still a clown. Same. He slept in and doesn't have time to change. He drives his son to school, then heads to work. Why are you dressed like a clown? While the men get to work touching up the house, Kent takes a trip to the bathroom. He scrubs off his clown makeup, then has a go at the wig. No dice. How about the nose? Ah! Kent pulls and pulls, but the suit doesn't budge. He finds a knife and tries to slice it open, but ends up cutting himself instead. He tends to his wound, then borrows a hacksaw. Things escalated quickly. He stuffs it down his collar and turns it on, but it breaks. He can do no more than gaze at his reflection with despair. Ken returns home later at night to his incredulous wife. Why are you still in that costume? He explains he really, physically cannot get it off, and she laughs, but he's serious. Meg drags him to the bathroom where she whips out some of her dentist tools. She clutches onto his big red nose and pulls, but the pain is unbearable. Kent musters up his courage and then... Ah! Wait, stop, don't need that. Meg inspects Kent's wig and realizes it's his hair. We cut to him at the hospital where a doctor questions him about his wrist. I cut it, by accident, he says. The doctor informs him that they have counselors he can talk to, but Kent insists he's fine. I'm not a clown! I look like a f***ing clown to you! <laughs> Drop a like if you're here before 100k, please. Anyway, he returns home and sulks in the shower. Then, an insatiable hunger strikes. Kent's stomach rumbles as he devours birthday cake. The next morning, Meg stumbles upon a note. I'm gonna go figure this out. Okay, thanks, bye. Oh, come on. You didn't have to leave a mess. Kent returns to the home where he found the suit and contacts his office to get more info on the homeowner. He sees the initials KC on the chest, then tidies himself up a bit before heading to the office. He greets the receptionist, grabs the file, then says goodbye. <coughs> Ew. Oh jeez, that was quite the cut. Kent voraciously eats while inspecting the file. The house belonged to the late Martin Carlson. A child then catches his attention and his stomach growls. Foreshadowing. Continuing his search, Kent visits a Halloween store where he finally finds a lead. Carlson Costumes. He calls in inquiring about the costume in Martin's house, to which Carlson replies, Where's Marty? Ken breaks the news to him. He's in clown heaven. Though, he's quickly interrupted by Carlson, who sternly warns him to stay away from the costume. Don't even touch it, he says. I'm wearing it. Bazinga. Hello? Ken explains that he's having a hard time getting it off, and the man changes his tone. Oh, it's fine. The old fibers can stick to your skin. Happens all the time. Why don't you stop by my warehouse, and we'll get it off in a jiffy. A relieved Ken makes his way over and meets Carlson, who's practicing his mannequin impression. I didn't want to scare you. Uh. They sit and chat over some tea while Carlson explains the true origins of the clown. It's in fact a mountain-dwelling demon with skin as white as snow and a reddened nose from the blistering cold. It feasts on children, one for every month of winter. Suddenly, Kent's vision begins to blur. He tries to get up, but collapses. We cut to a few minutes later. Kent is restrained and Carlson prepares to decapitate him. He manages to break free, but receives a minor flesh wound. Kent overpowers his captor and holds him at gunpoint. We then cut to him storming his house. Honey, there's a man trying to kill me, and he thinks I'm a demon. It's revealed his entire family is waiting in the background for an intervention. Kent, you gotta lay off the mushrooms. Okay, but seriously. So what's the problem? Just take off the clown suit, man. He leads them to his car where we find a restrained Carlson. Meg's sister's husband lunges at Kent and attempts to tear off his wig. This is a one-way ticket to Snap City, I'm telling you. He then requests his wife meet him at the police station before driving off. <laughs> Along the way, Carlson breaks free. A struggle ensues, and all the meanwhile, Kent's transformation accelerates. They end up getting in a crash, and Ken drags out Carlson to seek out his advice while he can still give it. Hmm, classic Twitter comeback. Then, Ken becomes fixated on something. He walks forward and pushes away a man who asks if he's okay. We see Ken march towards a car with two children in the back. His stomach groans and growls, but he ultimately overcomes the urge and runs into the woods. Meanwhile, Meg visits the police station. Ken never makes it, so she tells the cops what she can. We see the next day that Meg has informed the school and her son, Jack, not to let Ken pick him up. 
She also has a look at the book he left. Spooky. Let's go back to what Kent was up to last night. After running into the woods, he stumbles upon a small campsite where we find a small boy. Hey, you left your dirty plate by the fire. Ooh, almost scared me there. As the boy stumbles through the dark, he overhears Kent's talkative stomach. He shines a light on him, scaring himself in the process. Kent meekly asks for a little bit of food. The boy obliges, slowly walking up and offering a snack. The next day, Ken visits the gas station bathroom and inspects his deteriorating condition. His eyes are changing and his teeth have sharpened to a razor's edge. Suddenly, a bunch of field trippers stop by for a potty break. Ken hides in the stall, stalking his prey. The urges overpower him as he reaches down towards the leg. Fortunately, he slips, which snaps him back to reality. He hops on a bus and sulks before visiting one of the many properties he manages. As he tries to enter, he's confronted by Robbie, a little neighbor. He asks if he's a clown before making note of Kent's rumbling stomach. Whoa, you're really hungry. Kent warns him to stay away and enters the apartment, then gives himself a fit check. Jeez. Looking tight. No, like literally, the suit is becoming skin. Suddenly, we hear a knock and find that Robbie has returned with a snack and some cereal. You see what I did there? Kent closes the door and collapses in agony as he resists the inner clown. We cut to Meg at home with Jack, where they notice that young Pupper is acting a fool. Perhaps because he ate the clown nose. Then, Kent calls in. I am going to commit suicide. Whoa, I did not expect that. Well, that's the end of the movie. Hope you enjoyed. Psych! Meg decides she's going to run through all his properties in an effort to find him. Meanwhile, Kent tries his hand at woodworking. As he sets up his elaborate off switch, Meg searches far and wide. Looks like she's found the right place. While she looks for the right key, Ken is about to finish the job. Suddenly, the door opens, startling him and saving his life. Oh god, no. You know what they say, when life gives you lemons. As he enjoys his meal, Meg pulls up. She pleads with him to open the door, and while he's initially hesitant, he eventually gives in. Take me home. Don't look inside. She obliges, and per his request, ties him up in the basement. Then, she inspects the book again and learns more about the Carlson brothers. It seems Martin worked at a children's cancer hospital. In one of the pictures, we can see his brother dressed up in the clown outfit, entertaining some children. Somehow, Meg breaks into Carlson's hospital room and tries to talk to him, but his jaw is wired shut. She reveals that she knows he was once trapped in the suit as well. Via pen and paper, he states that only he could help her husband, and also warns, don't trust him. Left without answers, Meg visits Martin's house in search of the truth. In the basement, she finds a medieval looking chair and a camera pointed at it. We witness the creature in the full glory of its final, final form, form before cutting back to Kent. He spits out what remains of Robbie before we spot Jack, who just ran home from school. Kent calls out for him, prompting Jack to lean his ear against the basement door. Come downstairs. I need help. Uh-oh. Kent lures him in. Daddy? I'm stuck. Whoa, are we on TikTok? Jack reveals that he was bullied at school today by Colton. Then, Kent asks for the bolt cutters. Meanwhile, Meg receives a call from Denise asking if she's still supposed to pick up Jack, cause he gone. Oh no. She rushes back to the house and the basement door is open. <laughs> She asks where daddy went, and we cut to Colton's house. You guys suck balls. Ah, the average Fortnite fan. Look who's here. Colton gets up to investigate while his friends take advantage. Kent corners him, and while Colton cowers in fear, his friends chat in the background about how he bullied Jack. Back to Meg. She tucks Jack into bed, then finds that her beloved dog has gone rabid. Carlson pulled up with the clutch. Wait, how do you know where she live? Anyway, he yanks out the wires in his mouth and finally gives us some much needed exposition. Remember, this guy owns a costume shop. One day, he f One day, he received a shipment from Iceland following an estate sale of some rich weirdo. Inside, everything had rotted away except for the clown suit. Wanting to put it to a noble cause before selling it, he visited his brother's hospital to cheer up the kids. And that was the last thing he remembered. His next memory was waking up with the costume removed. You see, in the meanwhile, his brother had offered up five terminally ill subjects in order to break the curse. He also reveals that the costume is indestructible, and so, the only other option is cutting off the demon's head. Meg refuses to take such dire action, believing her husband incapable of such heinous deeds. They head to the basement, and Carlson identifies the bones that Kent spit out as belonging to a young boy. A curious Jack interrupts, sharing that his dad went to Colton's house. Meg drops Jack off with her dad, then we check up on our favorite Fortnite player. Carlson speculates as to where Kent could be at next. Oh no. Oh, an all-you-can-eat buffet. Meg heads in to investigate while Carlson waits. She searches for like 30 seconds, then gives up and returns back. Oh my god, Carlson is gone. What a surprise. Back inside, one of the boys looks for his brother. He crawls up the, what do you call these things? Tube? Anyway, he works his way up and runs into a girl. Don't go up there. However, mama ain't raised no bit. Oh, there he is. And there he goes. The boy saves his brother, then volunteers his tribute. tribute. <laughs> a frenzy ensues as the boy's severed arm slides down. Panicked parents rush out with their children as Meg rushes back in. 
She runs into Carlson, and the pair follow a blood trail before finding Kent. He groans and asks, where am I? Then, Carlson goes in for the kill. However, he's no match for the killer clown. Kent looms over his body, while Meg pleads with him to stop. He can save you. Lady, how many times does this guy have to tell you that's not gonna happen? Anyway, the demon assumes full control and demands a child. If she doesn't bring him one, he's gonna snack on Jack. He tells her where to bring a child, then runs off. Meg heads out, leaving Carlson to face the cops alone. Damn, she did my man's dirty. She checks up on her dad, who's considering bringing Jack home for literally no reason. Meg begs him not to, and he curiously asks about Kent. Is he home? What did he do? Suddenly, Meg spots a tribute. Don't do it. Oh, thank God. Meg decides to head home, and we see that her dad had the same idea. He finds some bones, then we cut to Meg arriving. She confronts him, and he promises to help her cover up whatever Kent did. But Kent has different plans. <laughs> Brutal. Whoa, at last. His final, final form, form has been achieved. He demands his final sacrifice and chases after Meg. She arms herself in the garage and waits. The demon pins her to the wall and, oh, I totally forgot to mention she's pregnant. As her stomach is pierced, she calls out for Jack to run, which inadvertently prompts the clown to switch targets. Way to go, mom. Jack runs away and finds a hiding spot while the creature hunts him down. Meg's motherly instincts kick in and she goes ham. She manages to critically injure the demon, but pays for it with a chunk of flesh. Afterwards, Jack spends his final moments crying like a little bit. Never mind. Meg traps the creature by its neck. As it tries to break free, the chain digs deeper and deeper into its compromised neck. However, the demon has a trick up its sleeve. Help me. Wanting to save Kent, Meg asks Jack to grab some more chains and the book. But Jack is like, what are you smoking? That ain't dead. Oh, yeah, you're right. 